Question one of the level three 2020 waves exam. Sweet as. Question one. Um, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. Um, what do we got? A Māori kaurāra. Um, is a short flute carved from a bone. This institute, uh, instrument can be modelled as an open pipe uh, of length point f was it? Uh, yeah, point one five five meter. Um, on one occasion, Manu covers all the holes and plays a note. There is the following displacement standing wave pattern for one of its harmonics. I hope I read that right. Anyway, what is the har harmonic of the diagram shown above? So when you do these questions, just just like just draw them from like we'll start from first principles. Um, so the first harmonic is just going to, and this is open open. Um, so we're going to have open open. So if we're going to have an open open, we have to have some sort of I don't know um, node in the middle, and that should be open open. And this is the first harmonic, and then we'll literally just chuck another node in. Oh, you could, uh, and we'll go another node. So we have two nodes, one two. And then we have like that, that, join them up. Um, and we still haven't quite got to the pattern. So this is the, this is half a wavelength. I'm just looking at it's quarter plus a quarter is a half. This is a whole wavelength. And we're gonna have to do, how many of these? How many quarters are there in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight quarters. The first pattern has two quarters, so I know it's the fourth harmonic, um, but I'll just draw the other, or the next one, just because, why not? Two, three nodes, like that. Um, and then I need to have a final cutoff. I am super messy. Um, and you can see this has got three big round things, uh, two big round things in the middle, then two anti-nodes either end. This has three, so this is the fourth harmonic. Um, and not to get confused with the overtones, the overtones are literally the notes that can be possibly played. Um, so, I mean, this is well, this is an open open, so it's always just, it's just gonna be a fundamental first overtone, second overtone, third overtone. Uh, right, this is the fourth harmonic. Harmonic. Right, calculate the frequency of the standing wave above. Um, to do this, we just need to say the length is equal to how many waves. Well, we've got from this side to here is one full wave because a wave just went and the pattern repeats itself. So we start at the top, neural back to the top again. Um, so it's one wave from here to the center. And then if we just mirror that, we've got two waves. So the length is equal to two waves or two wavelengths. Um, and we know that the frequency, well, V equals F lambda, so the velocity is equal to frequency times the wavelength. Um, in other words, uh, the frequency would be equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. Um, but in this case, I, I would put wavelength here, but I know that the wavelength, if I just move this two underneath, ah, stuff it, I'll just put it, oh, what well, I'm gonna rearrange first. Um, just put a, like a, Board around there, the wavelength equals uh, L over two. And now I know that a well, wavelength is L over two, so I'm gonna chuck that in, L over two. I'll chuck brackets around that because I could rearrange, but I can't be bothered. So that is gonna be equal to 340 uh, divided by brackets, what's the length? 0 0.155 divided by two bracket, and that is gonna be equal to 4,387. Um, so I'll write that, 4,387. Um, I mean, I could put 0 0.09 because this is my unrounded answer. Why not? Um, hertz. And then down the bottom here, I'll have F is equal to, how many SF we got? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I mean, really, we should round up to four, three, 90 hertz, but you should always put the unrounded, um, unrounded answer um, just in case. But I mean, NCA have never, it is technically in the curriculum that you should round to correct significant figures, as in you can't be more accurate than the least accurate significant figure, but I mean, it's never been marked. Right, should be taught though. Opening and closing the holes in the core can produce 
uh, different notes. Man, I hope I got that correct. Manu opens the last hole and plays a note. Blah, 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 blah. Explain how the frequency of the fundamental note played when the open hole, when the hole opened with the hole open, compares to the fundamental frequency, fundament, compared to the frequency of the fundamental note played when the hole is closed. Man, it's hard to read when I'm talking when I'm reading. Two different parts of the brain trying to work at once. Right, so it's, over here, what do we got? Um, they are all closed, I'm pretty sure. Covers all the holes. So initially, the uh, effective, effective um, length of the pipe is just the full length of the pipe. Here, the, elective, the effective length of the pipe is from the open hole to the open end. So it's going to be open, open. So that essentially, the effective length of the pipe is going to be has been shortened. Um, which will mean the wavelength, the, the fundamental wavelength that can fit inside the, you know, the little pipe um, reduces, which then, because the speed of sound hasn't changed, um, if the wavelength reduces, the frequency of the fundamental will increase compared to the uh, other one. Right, so I'll pause it and write it up coherently-ish. Right, so this is like one of the first questions I've actually got, had to go over because um, this is a compare and contrast question which is arguably excellent although I'm just looking at the uh, mark schedule in front of me um, and it's not it's only a merit so I just said opening the hole reduces the effective length you gotta like be careful with that it's like proper but it's like the proper way to word it um, that's the fundamental wave that can fit very careful wording with fit because that's sort of how it works um, brackets wave length will be reduced assuming the velocity of the wave is constant you always got to chuck that in there I mean it's already assumed but you just got to put it in there anyway um, from the re rearranged wave equation wave equation equation um, f equals velocity over wave length decreasing the effective length by opening the hole decreases the wavelength I, mean, I couldn't fit the word wavelength and thus increases the frequency compared to when the hole was closed um, yeah it's quite tricky for a for a merit question, because it's just C. Anyway, um, explain how this how a standing wave is produced in the chordal. Chor, al, and al. Man, I hope that's right. I mean, I'm practicing my pronunciation uh, pronunciations of English and Māori, obviously, because I suck at pronouncing English as well. Um, but anyway, right. So, how are we going to go about explaining this, and what do they probably want to know? So. For this is an open so in order for a standing wave to be produced, um, the go-to answer is you've got to have two waves coming in together with the same amplitude, with the same frequency, which constructively and destructively interfere, um, which then creates a standing wave. Um, a standing wave doesn't transfer energy. I mean, it's just two waves that interfere. It can only be made by more than one wave. For like an instrument, what ends up happening is you get like a sound wave or a pressure wave but it's anyway so a wave propagates down the tube then it reflects at this end because it's an opened end pretty sure there's not a phase change although well, i don't even know how you describe a phase change with air particles um so i mean i've never actually looked into that i know with like ropes and stuff um it's a little bit different so i don't even know if a phase change even makes sense um so yeah the reflected wave will come back um and constructively and destructively, or just interfere with the wave that you're still blowing that's going down. Um, that constructive and destructive interference um, will create spots of anti-nodes and nodes or high and low pressure, um, and you get a standing waveform. Yeah, it's really bad. I'll pause it and write it semi-coherently, and uh, hopefully that'll do. Right, so I said, when you blow on one end of the pipe, vibrations travel through the air particles down the pipe. These vibrations, brackets, waves, because this we are, reflect at the end, traveling back up the pipe, constructively and destructively interfering with the incoming wave. Only waves that can bracket, well, I would put like quotation marks, fit, because it's loosely used. It's like, yeah, loosely that's what it means. Um, and the tube resonate. I mean, this kind of links back to mechanics. Um, and build up an amplitude creating spots where nodes and anti-nodes form thus creating a standing wave one thing i actually never really thought about or like a I don't know, little tidbit um is that where you have anti-nodes at the end of a pipe um it's where there's no phase change because if there was well, like a phase inversion so if there was if when it reflected it um the wave flipped 
you'd have the wave coming in being uh, up and the wave coming back or like, reflecting back being down so you'd get superposition that add together to give nothing which give an antinode so because these antinodes uh, giving a node I should say because these antinodes at the end of these pipes it means the waves don't actually like change phase or invert um, which is a yeah, cool little tidbit I saw that in the answers um, I obviously do these I did this one before I even read the answers um, but I sort of check it just to make sure I just don't miss anything. Um, but normally now I actually try and do all of these before I even check the answers and then uh, make sure I'm not dumb. But also make sure that I kind of explain it without tainting from a perspective. Anyway, it doesn't matter.